your son gay, boop, 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 like yada, yada. And so my mom asked me, was that true? And I was like, no. I was like, this man said he was going to my house. Um, and so uh, I think I was like, oh my God, was I like 20 then? And so I just said, you know what? I'm tired of lying to my mama. No, my parents did not know. They did not know. I was tired of lying to my mom. I'm like, oh my God. Because I just, I, did, I did not like to lie. Oh my God. Lying? Because I used to always tell on myself all the time. My, my mom was like, Zoe, one thing about you, you're going to tell on yourself. So I just told, um, I told her and somebody says, I think somebody said Fufu like she didn't know. No, my parents did not know, y'all. Because nobody in my family, I wasn't raised in no hood family. Like we weren't like, like you, our men weren't like, the um what's that word called masculine what's that shit called to toxic masculinity we didn't have that in my family that toxic masculinity shit where like men can't wear pink or like the dudes in my family they're all like they're they're real confident men so they don't give a damn about all that other shit they don't do that toxic shit like a man's supposed to do this and a woman's supposed to do that i wasn't i wasn't raised around none of that stuff so um they really didn't know we don't my, my, like my mom she's a preacher or whatever she don't judge if you tell her you're not this, that's what she's going to believe. Because she was a tomboy. She played volleyball, all that stuff. And so she knew people, used to, like, anyway. Okay. So um, when I say hood families, I mean, like, families who have, like, that real dominant personality. That's what I mean when I say hood families. Okay. So anyway, the person called my phone. I was just like, you know what? I'm not finna, um, I'm not finna sit here and lie to my mama no more. So I went in there. I told her everything. And she like bust out crying. And that was the worst feeling in the world. It was the worst feeling in the world. Is she in the live? I don't know. If she is, she'll tell you this whole story. We were in the kitchen. I know exactly where I was. We were in the kitchen. And so she just started crying. She was like, no, I told her her room. Then we went to the kitchen. We just, she just started crying. She was like, what did I do? Did I do anything wrong? Was it my fault? Was I not there? Um, did I not love you enough? Um, she just start. I was just like, what is happening right now? I was like, oh my God. So I was just like, mama, you didn't do anything wrong. I was like, how are we? I was 20, I think, when I told her. Um, I was like, you didn't do anything wrong. What are you talking about? Like, I just had to really like calm her down. She was just like upset. So she was just like blaming herself and this and that. And I was just like, please don't tell daddy. Please don't tell daddy. And um, she was like, okay. So then we started talking more in depth. She was asking me, well, I know my son. <laughs> she said, I know my son. She said, well, I know my son. You too handsome. I know you better be not be the girl. And I just said, mama. <laughs> well, not like that. Cause back, at, back then I was like, you know, mama, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? I, that's what I was trying to be, you know, masculine, whatever. And so she went, oh my God. She didn't tell my daddy, but she was like, she told my uncle. She told my uncle who used to be in the army. He's the uncle that, you know how you got that one uncle that everybody's scared of? You don't do shit around him. You don't talk back to your mama. You don't hit your sister. You sit down in church. She told my uncle, the one everybody's scared of. Why would you tell him? She was like, I needed somebody to talk to. Cause she was, she just said she needed somebody to talk to. Talk to one of your sisters. <laughs> talk, to, talk to one of your sisters. So then he come calling me. You, you what? what you, what's this your mama talking about? You, you what? You ain't like that. No, you're not. Y'all, it was the, y'all. Oh, this was the worst couple of months of my life. No, you're not. You ain't like that. He was offering. This is how you straight men think. My, and I love my uncle. I think this is what kind of made us separate a little bit because it kind of hurt my feelings. My uncle offered. I love him now. My uncle 
offered to get me a prostitute. He said, he was like, he was like, how do you know you don't like vagina if you've never had it? How do you know? I was like, uncle, it's not that I don't like it. I just know what I like. Like, I know what I like. He was like, no, nah, no, nah, we're going to get you one. You're going you gonna to fuck up. Nah, nah, nah. I'm like, oh, my God. And it was turning me off because I don't like a woman who is easy like that. Like, if I was to ever date a woman, which I have dated girls, I've ate, I've eaten vagina before. It's not a problem, bitch. I know what I'm doing. I just never had sex with a woman. I just, I just know what I like. I like the, I just know, I know. And I'm not, I, women aren't ugly to me. Like I met a, oh my God, y'all. I met this beautiful woman at the, we was at the lounge last night. I would actually date her, but I know after, I don't know, because I know me. When I'm with somebody, if I really love you, I don't focus on other people. So I can't say that I'm not going to like her no more and want to mosey on out somewhere. Because when I like you, I like you. And I cannot focus on somebody else. So if I was to ever get a girlfriend, I could just date her. Um, but my girlfriend would have to let me be me. Like, she would have to let me be me. Like, I don't want to be... I don't want to have to walk around like this, like, oh, I'm her nigga. I still want to be like, oh, my God, girl, this show gets on my nerves. You know, I want to still be able to be, I want to be me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like I tell people, I even like trans men. I think trans men are beautiful. I, I, I just like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not saying I would never be with a girl. But I know that I love men. <laughs> I love the dominance of a man. I just love, I love the legs. I love the arms, the back, the shoulder. Like I like a man. I just know what I like. I don't know. But anyway, so my uncle wanted me to get with the prostitute. I said, no, right? I was like, no, I don't want to be with no prostitute whatever whatever so i got so mad so then um somebody said dick it's not even that for me i don't even that's what that's the that's the thing people think gay men gay uh, gay guys like dick i don't dick is beautiful yes i would prefer to see you oh mama if you in here i prefer to see you jack off <laughs> and not even have to have sex i mean i like giving hair but, okay off of that we back to the story um <laughs> I don't even like sex. No, that's the that's what y'all don't understand. I don't even like sex. I just like the man. Like I'd rather see you walk around in some boxer briefs and I'd be like, ooh, the print. Look at it. Yes. I like that. Like I like the visual. I don't really give a fuck about all the sex stuff. Oh, uh -uh. Anyway, so back to um what I was saying. So after my uncle offered a prostitute, whatever the case may be, woo, 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 we come to my daddy. I told my daddy, did I tell him or did my mama tell him? I think I told him. I think I told him because I said, mama, I want to get close. I want to, I want to tell daddy. I think I told him. We were, I think we were sitting in his truck and I told him. I think we were sitting in his truck and I told him, yeah. And and ever since the and when I told him, y'all know my dad did not talk to me for a whole year. And that hurt. He didn't tell me happy birthday. <sighs> Nothing. We was just in the house. We was just in the house. And I guess because he didn't get it because my dad was woman crazy. Like, he was woman crazy. He didn't say nothing like... He just said... He, what did he say? I don't think he said... I think he just said, that's not you. 
I think that's what he said. He said, that's not you. I think that's what he said. And we just didn't talk. We didn't talk. It was a long, yes. I, if it wasn't a year, it was almost, it was damn sure close. He didn't say happy birthday. He didn't say nothing, nothing. Thing I pro and if he did it and if if we did talk it was really short like okay yeah it was really short and I got it like I had already mentally prepared myself for everything like if they were gonna like say you gotta go which they did and which I kind of knew they wouldn't do that because I know my family and I know my mama I just knew that they would probably be like upset and so um yeah we just didn't talk. Because I do remember back... No, he did do this once for one of his friends. He did used to call... Him and his friend... Him and his friends used to call, like, people sissies and stuff. Like, sissies and faggots. Like, they wouldn't say to people face. They were never that rude. Um, They were never that rude. They would just... Like, if we were sitting amongst each other, like, at a... Because me and my dates go to track meets together. Track meets, basketball games. I would hang out with him and his homeboys at the games or whatever. And, um... That, if a gay person walked by, they'd be like, uh, Oh, God, that's sissy. You know what I'm saying? In my head, I'm like, oh, my fucking God. What the hell? And so, and that's why I feel like when y'all were saying being gay is wrong or whatever, I feel like God made me like this for a reason. To teach my dad that everybody is the same. No matter who you love, no matter who you like. I promise you, watch how, uh, watch how me... Living like this changed everybody. My uncle, who wanted to get me to go with a prostitute, whatever the case may be, he was he didn't like it for a minute. He was like, "Don't you bring nobody to my because my granddad is a preacher. Don't you bring nobody to my my dad my granddad's house. Don't you bring no niggas up in that church. I'm gonna beat their ass. I'm gonna beat your ass. Da -da -da. All this stuff." He got my daddy. Uh, cause you know my homeboys used to spend the night sometimes. Ain't nobody else spending at this house. I don't want no no men in my house spending night. This is my house. Da -da -da -da. All them, right? Just oh, it was a mess. It was just like oh god, it was so much. It was so much. And then just by me being me, and then they just saw like I'm still Zoe. I was still the same person. I wasn't. Nothing changed. My uncle. It just disappeared out of nowhere. And my boyfriend started coming around. He would speak. And the day, this is when my daddy, when my daddy changed. I had a boyfriend. His name started with a C. I'm not going to say his name. Because <laughs> I ain't going to say name. I had a boyfriend. His name started with a C. And I brought him to the house. And he met my mama. Daddy didn't speak. Whatever, whatever. So one day I was getting ready to go to work. I was going to work. And, hey, Jackson, I was going to work, and I don't think my boyfriend knew. So he came to the house, and it was just my daddy there. He was like, your daddy here. I was like, oh, my God. You know my dad let him go in the house, and my dad was leaving? Like, everybody was He's like, oh, go on in. Go in the house. So my boyfriend called. He was like, oh, I'm in your room. I'm waiting for you for work. I'm like, what? He was like, um, he was like, I'm in your room. I was like, my dad let you, my dad let you in the room? He was like, yeah. And then he's like, and then your daddy also told me, um, if I needed help driving my stick shift or whatever, he'd teach me because I told him I had a stick shift and I'm just now learning. And he's like, he's going to help me. I said, wait a minute. I said, wait a minute. What is happening right now? I said, what is happening? I was like, you're in my house, and then my dad said he's going to help you learn the stick shift? <laughs> what the fuck? And so when I talked to my dad, he was like, yeah, I help him, whatever, you know, I don't mind. And he just changed. It's like, it's like something came over him. I think he just had to understand it and process it. And now he supports everything that I do do like from youtube from instagram he'll wear my merch like he's so proud of like like it, and this is for this is for vine even popped off this was like so don't, so some people might be like oh he just doing it because you famous now or you're popular now no this was before vine and all that like he just it was a 360 and we just started talking and i don't know i don't know I don't know what happened. And it and it was like the biggest relief. Like, oh, okay. 
it was like the biggest relief. Lady, my mom, she finally got good. And then this is what my mom said. You know, she's a pastor. So she was just like, you know what, Zoe? I love you. But she's like, it's going to take me a minute to understand and love your lifestyle because of how I was raised. Because mind you, my mom's dad is a preacher. And so she, before she was even born, she was in church in her mama's belly. So then you come out of your mama's belly, you're in church from kindergarten up, then you become a preacher. So all you know is, you know, church and what that Bible say. So she was like, Zoe, she's like, I love you. I'm going to always love you because you are my son. But she was like, I, she's like, it's going to take me a minute to understand it. So the more she talked to me and the more she got it and she understood, she was like, I still know what the Bible say, but she's like, I understand what you're saying. And so, I, and that's what I feel God is. He's a person of understanding and, and learning people and figuring people out. And that's what I'm saying. I don't think God will send gay people to hell. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Not my, not the God, not, not, I don't believe it because God is love. He, that is what he is. That's why when people say, what are you? Are you, are you Baptist? I, I was raised in a Pentecostal church. I was raised in a Pentecostal church. So, you know, they real strict. Like my granddaddy hated, he hated my locks. He hated my locks. He hated my earrings. He hated my tattoos. Like, oh, when, every time he saw me, when you cutting your hair, when you cutting that hair, only women supposed to have hair. When you getting rid of those earrings, when you, why, why you want to tattoo your body? Oh my God. He didn't want, um, he didn't want, um, he didn't want women wearing pants to church. He was like, Women ain't coming in my church with no pants on. If you have a skirt on, it got to be past your knees. I was like, oh my, oh my God. My granddaddy was so strict, like so strict. So yeah, and after that, my life just got so much easier. It just got so much, and I just started finding my purpose. Like that, like I could have been bigger on YouTube and social media now because I wanted to start um, I wanted to start back in middle school but I was so afraid of what people were going to think about me as a person because I knew people gay wasn't right because child when I was growing up how these kids now is so open bitch please let life be like it is now when I was growing up I thought I was the only sugar foot in the school <laughs> bitch I was the only sugar foot in the school, bitch. You couldn't tell me there was no other sugar foot in that school. I'm so I was like, everywhere I'm look, I'm like, is it anybody else or is it just me? Because <laughs> god damn. <laughs> I was so I was so scared. I was so scared. But now it's like everybody's just so open now. If I was in school now, oh bitch, she'll be a hot pocket. I'm glad I didn't grow up now. I'm glad I didn't grow up now because I'm I don't want to be this free. <laughs> I don't want to be this free. Being like that let me learn myself and who, who, if it really was me. Cuz some of these people I think I'm not trying to I don't want to judge nobody, but I feel some of these people are doing it as a fad. I feel some of these people are doing it out of just you do got to be curious sometimes and learn yourself. You know what I'm saying? But I knew who I was. And so by me, you know, trying to pray and do all this stuff like, God, take it away. I don't want to be like this. If this is not who I am, get it away from me and going through my, you know, going, I don't know. I, maybe some, and I don't know what other, um, other people go through. Maybe they go through that same thing too. Like, cause you know, nobody who wants to go to hell, like who wants to go to hell? I can't read it. I'm not, I don't like to read the comments. I'm, I'm such a good talker that I just like to talk. I don't like to read the comments. Um, so sorry if y'all are saying something I need to see. Um, but like, who wants to go to hell? Who just wants to wake up and say, oh, I'm going to be gay. Let's go to hell. Or let me just stay like this. Fuck what God say. I want to go to hell. You know what I'm saying? And then I even had that moment where, um, I was like, okay, well, what if gay is like an addiction? You know what I'm saying? I, I had that moment. I was like, just like a drug addict likes cocaine or likes whatever they like. What if that's what gay is i oh that moment killed me i was like what if there's something that you know i have to shake and 
I'm saying like how they be like, oh, it's just drugs. I'm not really high. I'm okay. Or, you know, I'm gay. I'm all right. I'm okay. Oh, y'all. I, I was going through so freaking much. I was going through so much. I was going through so much. Y'all don't understand the stress. The stress. The stress. So I just woke up one day and I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just let it go. And I'm just have to just be me. And just, I don't know. Whoever I whoever I end up with, I it just and sometimes that's why I that's why I be single sometimes. Because sometimes in my in the back of my mind, I still be having that little fear where it's like, well, what if I just like men, but I don't date them? <laughs> like, what if I just like them, I don't date them and have sex? And I is that typically you're still gay? Yeah. <laughs> so I be had that's why I feel like I don't I don't know. Somebody said, why do I like men? Uh, why do I? It's a certain... It's just a feeling. Um, And like I tell people, it's not just men. I like women too. I, I like women. I'm attracted to women. I will flirt with women. I, my favorite asset on a woman is her legs. I love beautiful legs. Like... It's not the titties. It's not the breasts. I love legs. Then after legs, it's um your butt. <laughs> after legs, it's your butt. But I am in love with legs. That's why I love Rihanna so much, too. Rihanna has beautiful legs. I love legs. Then I love your butt. And then after that, it's your chest. Your face, whatever. You could be all right and put on makeup and be fine, child. But um, my favorite things are legs, butt, then chest. Um... I don't know. So I love women. I, I love, like, I don't even watch, <laughs> we're getting so deep. I don't even watch gay porn. I like straight porn because I like to see the <laughs> vagina is beautiful. It is. It's, be yeah, I like, I'm not saying that. You almost got me in trouble. Vagina is beautiful. And when you, I don't know, but I like to see the dick. <laughs> My main purpose is for the dick, but the vagina be looking good when it goes in. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. So it's not. So when people say, why do you like men? It's not just one thing. I like men. I'm attracted to. Okay. I will date men, but I'm attracted to women, and I find trans men sexy, too. Does that make sense? I like it. Bitch, as long as your energy is good with me, like, if we are, if our energy, like, because you could be Asian, you could be white, you could be black, you could be Chinese, you could be Puerto Rican, you could be albino. Like, y'all, I was with my cousin and them. This man came in the club in a wheelchair. I said, bitch, I'll talk to <laughs> I don't discriminate. I don't discriminate. I said, I, he was in a wheelchair, but he was fine. I said, I'll talk to him. I'll push that wheelchair. You got me fucked. Yes, I will. I'll push it. I surely will. I'll push that wheelchair. I just like people. I like people. I like you for how you, like, if you can hold a great conversation, oh, you got me. But it can't be annoying. It got to be a good conversation. Like how this, how we're talking. Well, I say how we're talking. It got to be a conversation like for real. Like I like, I like intellect. I like all that type of stuff. Like talking where you can see not just your point of view, but other people's point of view. That's why I asked y'all first. Well, what is it that makes same sex disgusting? You know, I love talking. And then after talking, I love somebody that can make me laugh. If you can make me laugh. You got me. Then I love people who are family oriented. I love people who love God. I love people who are very dominant and passionate about something. Like, I like that kind of stuff. And and then I bet y'all saying, so why are you with street niggas, hood niggas? Y'all would be so, y'all would be so surprised how hood niggas honestly are very 
<laughs> they said, so what about Roland Ray? <laughs> Roland Ray has a sweetheart, but he's just not my type because he's feminine. I don't like feminine. I can't take, I can't date a feminine person. Um, but street dudes, y'all would be so surprised how smart and intelligent they are. They just decide to make stupid decisions. And the reason, and, and that's why I don't look down on street dudes or hood guys or whatever you want to call them, because you don't know what they went through in life to get them where they are. And I feel like that is, and my mama hates me for this. Cause I'll be telling her, she's like, why you, why you date those type of people? And I just feel like I like to show people like all the straight dudes who were hood that I dated. I would be like, look, there's more than life than this. You don't have to be on the street. You don't have to do that. And this is their, com their conversation be so good. You get to get in their mind and pick it. And you're like, oh my God, you're so smart. You're so, but why are you doing this? And they're just like, this is all I know. This is all I know. Ain't nothing else out there for me, man. I got a felony. No, it's not. Like they just need that push. They need that person. And because the society already talks down on them, they already feel like the world is after them. Then it's like, women and it's like the black men i know w black women are the most hated but i feel like black men just black women got it bad it, they're most hated like people treat them like shit but black men i feel like people just don't un, i don't, I don't want to say understand them i don't know what's the work right thing to say i just feel like they feel like the world's against them and it really isn't. The world actually wants to be them. And they just don't know how to take control of that. I don't know, y'all. I just... Uh, I hate seeing a guy feel like his life can go nowhere. That hurts me. Like... I don't know. And like, when I be, when I be dating them, they'd be like, dude, oh my God. They'd be like... I just... They say this every time. And I know some of y'all women have experienced this with them too. And that's why it'd be so hard to get away from them. And sometimes, some of them be playing mind games, which you got to be knowing them. But the ones who are for real, they just be like, man, it's just like, I just feel like, <sighs> never mind. They be saying some sweet shit. Because you know they, you know they really haven't experienced that type of stuff in life. And I feel like it motivates them. Like, to this day, some of them uh, hit me up. They have girlfriends now. They don't even want to talk about, you know, what we used to do. They'd be like, man, you just really helped me. You pushed me. And I'm, I'm grateful for you. And I'm like, thank you. Not all, yeah, not all. Some of them are just stuck in their ways. And that's them. But you, like I always say, it's something in life. Something in life got you in that position. Something happened. It, it, I don't know if it was your upbringing, if the way your parents acted with each other. Something happened. Was it something happened? I don't know. I don't know. And but then, like I said, some people choose it just because. Because I know some guys who be child, their parents be a teacher, their daddy be a cop, and honey, you talking about you in gangs and shit. And I'm like, boy, <laughs> you live in a four story house over there in in Clayton County, honey, and your mama is a teacher, your daddy is a cop. Why are you out here doing this? But I feel some people do that just to fit in. Because, and I'd be like, well, why are you trying to fit in? So that's people who are followers. And they, um, they just do it to fit in. And then after that, they caught up. Because now it's just something you're around. It's a lifestyle that you chose, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I just love... Yeah, I, I do tell people I'm an I'm a empath, if that's what you call it. I do tell people that. I really love, like, I gravitate to people who need people. And that's, and I'm getting, y'all, I'm getting better this year. I'm getting better this year of not always jumping, Wendy, because I, 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 I did find out that sometimes people will take your kindness for weakness. And I just used to always give, 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 give. Like, I used to love, I... 
I used to like to just give. Like, if they'd be like, hey, babe, I need money for this. Or can you give me that? Or can you give me this? And I just had, I would just do. And that came from my mama. And I used to always get mad at her about that. She used to always give, like, every homeless person on the street money. If my cousin, somebody needed money, she'd give it. I'm like, mama, why are you giving these people money? And you always talking about some, oh, man. I don't know why I'm giving out my money. I ain't got no money. And I'm like, well, why are you giving it out? She's like, because if God bless me with money and I know somebody ain't got it, I just give it to somebody else. And I'm like, well, girl, we going to be broke after a while. She should just give. And I think I picked that up. I should just, I just give. And I'm like, girl. And then you just be like, and then you get hurt because then it's like, you be like, when they don't appreciate you, it's like, damn, you don't even appreciate I never questioned. I never complained. I just did. And then you cheat or you do this or you lie or you just, it's like, how can you do it to somebody who's actually there and in your corner? That's just, that's crazy. Like one thing about me, I'm going to do for my people. Anybody who know me, if you bae, oh, bitch, I'm bitch. If I'm straight, bae straight. No if ands and buts about it, bitch. If especially if you were like, if I know we bae, not just if we just kick it. Because sometimes some niggas want to talk to you, like, because I say this sometimes on live, and so people will get in my DMs and be like, oh, let me see if you prove about what you talking about. Hold on, first of all, nigga, you're not bae. <laughs> you're not bae, so no. Uh, yeah, that's so. It's just I don't know. I do, and then they just take advantage of it. They take advantage of it. And then it's just, I don't know. Life is just so, life is crazy. It's just so much. It's so much. How was that fun? What do you mean, how was what fun? How was what fun? No, my bae got money too. But I'm saying if I, I'm spinning. If I'm straight, you're straight. So if you get down bad, I'm going to have you. And hopefully when I'm down bad, bitch, you're going to have me. Um. So when are you going to be happy and in a relationship? You deserve a good relationship, not if they're going to take advantage. What are you talking about? Don't nobody take advantage of me. See, then, when you tell people that you help people out, they say that people are taking advantage of you. That's not what I said. I said some people have and then others don't. You've been in a relationship sometime where somebody's taking advantage of you. Every relationship you get in, it's not going to be perfect. Um, every relationship is not going to be perfect. So I have been in some where they have, and I have been in some where it was 50-50. It's just I happen to deal with people who have let some, most of the guys I've dated have, have, le have had less than me. I don't, one thing about me, I'm not fake. So I can't, when, so, cause some people be like, well, Zoe, you need to get you a police officer or you need to get you, um, a, 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 a doctor or this. When I, ha let me tell you something. When I hang out with the social media people, when we was, when I was on Wild and Out and we were going to the Hollywood parties and stuff, I felt like an outcast. Even though we were all doing the same thing, even though we were all making the same kind of money, some may have had more, I felt like an outcast because I felt like everybody around me was fake. I just felt they were fake. I felt like they weren't who they really are. I felt like everybody was trying to compete with who had the most money, who was wearing this, dripping in this outfit it just it was so i don't know i i don't know and then people will be laughing with you here but then when they get over here they were talking about you with these folks and i'm just like oh my god who is who's friend around this motherfucker so that's why you don't really see me like i love b simone i love pretty v but that's why you never see me at parties with them and stuff because i just don't feel comfortable i don't know so that's why everybody be like like i'm i'm usually with my cousins a lot of my friends have nine to fives y'all my a, a lot of my friends have nine to fives they're not celebrities they're not social media people my friends work at a nine to fucking five honey and um live regular lives and that's i like being around that like when i be going to these little hood clubs people be like zo what you doing over here why are you in this lounge this is where i feel good this is where I feel good. 
I'm good here. I'm good here. I don't know. I'll be like, I'm good here, honey. Y'all chilling. Y'all having fun. It ain't about who popping the most bottles. It ain't about who doing this. I, I be, I be good, honey. Take me to a little rinky dink hole in the wall, and baby, I finna have the 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 best life ever, child. I'm good. I don't know. I just, I don't know. And so I think that's why I'm attracted to. I don't know. Cause I like I like people who have who. I feel like when you're already rich or when you already have money, your drive is different. You just got to, you like to just feel you're comfortable now. Like, oh, I got this. You know, I got money now. You know, I'm, I'm on TV. I'm good. We're going to have another show. I'm good. You know, you got that attitude. Like, oh, I'm good. But when you're around a dude who's trying to become a rapper or a girl who's trying to break out into the modeling industry or whatever, their drive is different. Their thinking is different. Their, their pro something's different. They look at life different. They want more. They want to be like, you know, I don't know. But when you already have it, it's like, oh, I'm going to go home to my Beverly Hills house. Oh, girl, I got, bitch, I got three Mercedes and I got a yacht and my dad, does, you know, it's like, oh, I got this. But when you want it, you're a different type of breed of person. I don't know. And I don't know. I don't know, y'all. I'm just talking. It's a hustle. hustle, right? That's why I think I like Rihanna because even though she was a singer, she still was trying to find something else to do. But I do need, I I don't know. I do want a significant other because I've gotten lazy. I've gotten a little lazy, and I need somebody who can push me. Like I want some. Like I I love. I, like that's why that's the only thing I miss about relationships. I like when people push. Like my lover pushes me. Whenever I get a lover, I was like, "Baby, push me, push me, push me." Like I can push myself, but it's just something about when your lover push you, and then you do it, and you accomplish it, and your love. Cause like I already know I can do it, but when baby be like, "You can do it," I believe in you. You be like, "I'm gonna do this." <laughs> and then when you do it baby like i knew you could do it i'm so proud of you you be like oh thank you babe it's just so different it's like oh i'm doing it oh babe you're gonna be happy when i tell him this news <laughs> because like when when you when you tell your mom and them like when i told them oh i got on wilding out they was like we knew you could do it. Like, your family knows what you can do. You know what I'm saying? But it's just different when your bae give you that. Man, I'm so proud of you. I knew you could do it. It's like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Leave me alone. Okay, say something. <laughs> uh, turn on the heat. Oh, uh, yeah, it's getting cold. It's, like, really cold. So, I know my body heat and then me in here talking and shit. Yeah, my windows are going to fog up. I got to go. I've been talking to y'all too long. Let me get my mask. Let me go. Ooh. Let me go, but, um, just be y'all, have fun. You know, I've always told people in the end, I told my mama this too. I had a dream about it. I always had a dream about it. I think my last calling in earth is to be like either a motivational speaker or a preacher. I always told my mama that I had a, I had a dream. That guy had told me, because I started crying and everything. I had a dream that he told me, I want you to preach. Girl, I said, I know you lying. I was like, not right now. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> not, not right now. Not, <laughs> who? Uh, uh, I can't do that. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> do it. Let, catch me later. Not right now. I can't do it. Because because the way my... 
And somebody said, preacher, yeah, because my heart is way more pure than yours. See how you questioned it? Um, I don't judge anybody. And that is what a real pastor is supposed to be. I don't care if you have been a murderer, um, if you have like whatever, gay, whatever. It's always still some hope that you can be a better person. And I'm not going to judge you. What you did was wrong. It was horrible. It was not good. But I'm not going to hate you. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not my job to hate you. And that's always been me. Like, I, I just, I I always try to, I don't know. Like, because like, um, like somebody always told me, if somebody killed your mama, you wouldn't kill them? Now, if they broke in my house and I, and I know they come there to kill us, then yeah, I'm going to shoot. Because I'm trying to protect my house. But let's say my mama was out and somebody shot her. I'm not going to go out and try to get that person. Oh, they shot my mama. I'm going to find them. I'm going to kill them. I hate them. I'm just going to be like, damn. And I'm going to be hurt. But at the end of the day, you still have to forgive that person. If y'all talking about the Bible and stuff, you still have to forgive. And that is the one thing that makes us different from God because God knows how to forgive. That's the one thing humans cannot do. We do not know how to honestly forgive and forget. And God knows how to do that. And you got to know how to you got to know how to forgive. You can't have malice in your heart. You can't have hate in your heart. When you have malice and hate in your heart, you blocking blessings, baby. Honey, that's why I told my friend. He was so mad at his mama. He was so mad. Like, man, I'm like, you got to let that go. I said, one, you're cutting your days on your earth short because you over here disrespecting your mama. You're not, you are not, you're not supposed to disrespect your parents. That's why when I kept lying to my mama, not telling her I was, I like men, I was like, girl, you don't count, count off one month. <laughs> girl, count off two. <laughs> you gay, son? No, girl, count off a year. <laughs> So I said, look, you know what? <laughs> uh, I got, I'm trying to see 50. <laughs> Mom, I got to tell you something. <laughs> Mom, I got to tell you something. She... <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Child. Yeah, girl. But yeah, we don't know how to forgive. We don't know how to forgive. And let go. But yeah. You just can't, um, you can't, um, <laughs> right. Somebody said, you're supposed to be cutting off years. I know, girl. I was trying, to, <laughs> I, was try I, I was trying to save me a little time. <laughs> she said, because it did say you'll count years off your life. I was trying to save me a little time counting months. <laughs> she had wishful thinking. But, um, but yeah, but no, I'm not, I'm far from perfect. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I, I just know, you know, I'm far from perfect. I do dumb shit. I've said dumb shit. <laughs> um, so yeah. <sighs> I say this live. I don't say my life. Oh, to anybody who wants to ever see my lives, they be on YouTube. Just type in I am Zoe Lives. Somebody in here right now is recording, I promise you. And it's going to be on YouTube 10 minutes after I get off. It's crazy. Like, all of my lives are on YouTube. Those people are making money. Um, yeah, whoever this is, label this one. Zoe talks about his coming out story. Say, Zoe... I am Zoe's Instagram live coming out story. Watch. It's going to be on there, y'all. I am Zoe's live coming out story. Look for it in 10 minutes. I am Zoe's live coming out story. 10 minutes. It's going to be up there. Watch this. I promise you. They be on it, baby. Whoever that person is, be on it. They be on it. That's why I got to watch what I say sometimes on live, girl, because I don't want to get, you know, famous, famous. And then they come back and say, you said that on live. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was just cutting up. Because I've had that happen before. Back on you now. I used to say some stupid shit. 
dumb shit, acting stupid. It was comedy to me, but I was making wrong decisions. And child, it bit me in the ass. <laughs> just being dumb, just being dumb, having fun. I, this is before I was even famous. And just having fun, acting stupid, just make, I was, my purpose was make people laugh, say some stupid shit, talk dumb. What's the first thing you think about? And child, got me. <laughs> got me. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Ooh, that was a roller coaster. But anyway, um, I love y'all. Thank y'all for listening to me talk. I can talk for hours, honey. And I had to get out the house. I came, what did I come here to get? Y'all, I came here to get me a clipper because I haven't been to my um, laser hair. And so like my hair is growing back on my face. So I'm going to use the clippers and clip it. And then um, I was bored in the house because like my ex is gone. So it's like nobody calls my phone. I'd be so bored. I thought having a house was going to be so fun. I should have just stayed in an apartment. House is fun when you have like company or if you have a family or a lover that comes over. So like I just be so bored in the house. I'd be so bored. The animals ain't child. They be annoying. It'd be so boring, especially because I live in a three story house. Thank you, Jesus, for it. I'm not complaining. Because sometimes you complain, God will wake you up and let you understand why you should have been grateful. But um, I live in a three-story house. And I um, I just be so bored. So bored. And I think that's how sometimes I find myself in these toxic-ass relationships. Because I, I stop thinking about what I know I need and want. And start settling for what I see. And that is why, for that person who said, why you, for that person who said that comment, why I date them hood niggas, I think sometimes, I, I know exactly what I want. Let me tell you, I know exactly how I want my man or my woman, really man, my woman, women come second for me dating, men is always first for me dating. I know exactly how I want my man to act, talk, think, everything. I know exactly, I don't, pr I, bit, baby, you know how you're supposed to write it down? I want how I want them to be God fearing. I want them to love their mom and their daddy. I everything strong this that I, everything graduated from school, went to college. Hopefully, like like sports. Da, da, da. Everything know how to cut grass. Treat me right. Don't disrespect me. Don't use me. And I don't, baby. I don't ask for. I know it. I want him to be able to talk. I know everything that I want them to act like. I see my person, but because I get so bored. When you see that one with the gold teeth and looking like this or that pretty smile, chocolate, but he little badass, you be like, oh, child, just can I touch <laughs> the hem of his garment? <laughs> can I just touch it? <laughs> you forget, you get amnesia. You get amnesia. Uh-uh, that's not B. Simone. That's just anybody who knows how to manifest. And manifesting is extremely real. It is so real. I don't think... People don't understand how real manifesting is until you get in tune with it. And I mean, and when I when I say you have to manifest, I manifested me getting on Wild Out. I manifested my first apartment, my three Mustangs. I manifested my house. I manifested everything. And I'm telling you, it's, it's so real and people don't understand because like we are connected to this world and your mind the the frequencies in your mind is so for real and the, your, your power in your tongue is real too honey so it's all about believing and you can't it can't be no weak faith it can't it can't be no weak faith even if you have a little bit of doubt your manifestation is not going to happen i mean it really 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 you gotta mean it i was like man because when i was growing up I was like, y'all, I was like, mama, I'm going to live in these apartments right here. I was in middle school. I said, well, I'm going to live in these apartments. I am. And I don't know how I was going to live in it. Don't Didn't even have a job. I was like, well, I'm going to live in those. Kept kept going, kept going, kept going. Oh, I'm going to live in those. I'm a, I kept saying it. I got my first apartment. It wasn't those. But I kept saying, I'm going to live in those apartments. Baby, got them. Then I was like, you know what? My, I said, I want a Mustang. That is my favorite car. I'm going to get me a Mustang. Bitch, I had three. 
I said, you know what? I said, mama, I'm ready to move out. I was staying in my apartment for like uh, six years, I think. I said, mama, I'm ready to move out. And I got the type of mama who is so like, you sure? Can you handle the bills? Did you calculate everything? You gonna be able to do this? You gonna do that? And then I'm like, oh my God. She made me, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe I need to stay here. <laughs> Maybe I need to stay. Maybe I need to stay at my apartment. I don't know if I'm ready for this. What if I do lose my job? What if the internet cut off? What am I going to do? So I said, you know what? I said, no, I'm going to get my house. I said, daddy, I want that house. He said, son, can you do it? I said, I can do it. He said, well, go get it. I said, oh, I'm going to get it. I said, I'm going to get my house. So we went. The bank, I, I, I'm with Georgia United Credit Union. You know, credit unions give you them good old percentages and stuff. Child, I went. They were so fucking disrespectful. He was like, um, because mind you, I don't I don't have a job. Right? I, I don't work a regular job. So I didn't have no pay stubs or anything or nothing like that. And so I guess he didn't get how social media work and how Google pays me and all that other stuff. So I got declined. I'm spitting. I got declined. And so I was like, I'm getting my house. And we had to have a deadline because it was it was about to go. I said, I'm getting my house. I am getting my house. And so then, by the grace of God, hallelujah, this lady, hit, my friend connected me to this lady who does stuff for entertainers. Like, she helps entertainers get houses because if you're an entertainer and you don't have the pay stubs and things to show that you're working and things like that, where your money's coming from, because when you get in the house, they ask for everything. Like, ooh, they want to know your FBI them, please. They, uh, they want to know everything. So, I went to the lady. She helps people like me who are YouTubers, entrepreneurs, who work for themselves to get loans, whatever the case may be. We got it. It was a little shaky. I said, I'm going to get my house. And baby, got my house. I said, thank you, Jesus. Got my house. And I'm living there comfortably. Ain't worried about if my mortgage is going to get paid. My first car paid off. Walked in, paid it off. My first car, no, my first car, I had a car note. But then I got in that wreck because I fell asleep. Ooh, y'all, thank you, Jesus. I fell asleep. My car flipped six, four, four times because I was coming from my cousin's house. Should have stayed my little sleepy butt there. But I said, I got to go home. I went home because, you know, sometimes you get tired of sleeping at folks' house. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I was going home, car flipped four times. Landed in a, um, it, it's like a ditch, but not a ditch. It's called something else. Landed in it. The car was sitting straight up. I woke up. I said, oh, my God, where am I? And, baby, I bust out that car. All I had was a broke thumb. I walked like, oh, my God, how many miles did I walk? I think I walked like seven, eight miles to a, a phone. I called my dad. I said, Daddy, I got in a wreck. And so when the police came, the police was like, what happened, son? Me lying. God forgive me. I said, a deer jumped out, and I tried to swerve on him. <laughs> you know police are really smart. He gonna pull me to the side after he after you know had the assessed the situation. He pulled me to the side. He said, "Son, it's okay." That she said, "I don't know if you were drunk or if you fell asleep." He's like, "But I know you didn't." Um, he said, "I know you didn't dodge a deer." He said, "One, because um, there's no skid marks in the road." I said, "Oh my god." <laughs> He said, I'm going to show you what happened. He was so nice, a white man. He said, I'm going to show you what happened. He said, you see right here? Now look at the grass. He said, this is when your car swerved off in the grass and you came back on the road. And I saw it. He said, then you swerved off in the grass again. He said, and you can see in the grass, your tire marks go away. He said, that's when you flipped. And then he showed me how it skid. He said, and it flipped again. He showed me all of that. He said, I flipped four times and landed in that ditch thing i said jesus christ and y'all i promise you in my sleep i felt myself going like this he said if i would not have been sleep that he's like if you would not have been sleep you probably would have died because that because your body tenses he said if it was a real wreck he said because your body tenses up and that's how people die in car wrecks or break stuff because they tense up. But he said, because he said, that's why dr people who are drunk or sleep, they don't ever die or get any broken bones really because their body's going with the wreck. So they're not feeling anything. And so, yeah, y'all, it was, oh my God, 
I will post. I, I posted it a long time ago on my Instagram. I posted again on my story. Let y'all see the car. Y'all, the car was smashed. And oh, see, I believe. And this is why I believe in angels. My aunt Ruth had passed not too long before that. And she had a blue ribbon. And I, I said, God, I said, protect my car. I said, Auntie Ruth, please be with me when I'm in my car all the time. Watch over me. Be with me. Whatever the case may be. Woo, woo, woo. It was a longer prayer than that, though. And so, y'all, I promise you, I'm going to show you the car. That whole passenger side was crushed. Even the back and behind me was crushed. The front smashed in. Guess what? Me and my Auntie Ruth... Purple ribbon was right there. Right there. Everything was crushed. But me and my door was okay. Oh! Me and my door, my little bubble was okay. It's crazy. When I show y'all the card, when I, I'm going to post it on my store. I got to find it. When I show y'all the card, y'all going to be like, oh my gosh. How did you get out of that? Crazy. And then that's when my mom was just crying. She's like, and there's this old lady at my church. Y'all, God be talking to you. You don't even be knowing it. This lady at my church, I was back in, I think I was back in middle school, high school. She said, you're going to be somebody big. She always said it. I don't even know if she's still alive. I got to ask my mama. Her name was uh Sister, not Sister, Sister Ferguson. I don't know if any of the Fergusons from Atlanta are watching me. Y'all tell Sister Ferguson she was right. I love her. I love her. I love her. I love her. Sister Ferguson used to come to me all the time. She was like, and my mama can vouch for this. She's like, he going to be something big. I just, I saw him on TV. He going to be big. I saw him on TV. I saw him on TV. You going to be big. You going to be something. You going to be something. I was like, yeah, I am. Thank you so much. I am. I am. Was on wild it out. Girl. I'm on your phones. I've been on talk shows. I said, look at Sister Ferguson. Look at Sister Ferguson. Like, God will talk to you, but if your ear has to be, like, it'll come through people. It could even come through animals. It'll come through a song, but you have to catch it, and people don't know how to catch it when he's talking to you. Like, it's like a you got to catch it. It's so crazy how you catch you. It's a different feeling when you know that, oh, this is meant for me. It's weird. You'll be like, how did, why did they say it like that? Like, I, <laughs> I don't know. It'd be different. It's different. It could even be how the wind blow. Like you could be outside and you could say, God, what do you want me to do with my life? That's all you got to say. Like you could be like, what do you want me to do with my life? Like what is going on with my life right now? And the wind could just blow. Some people think it's just the wind, but when you want a different vibration, you'll be like, I got it. <laughs> you'll be like, he was telling me to do what, do what you were thinking, Zoe. That's that's how I am. I'd be like, he said, do what you was thinking. And and you, ooh, it, ooh. Y'all, I'm different, honey. She's a, like, I thank God that I was, like, when people be like, God isn't real, or how do y'all believe in God? That's the white man thing to keep black people down or whatever. I don't believe that crap. I don't believe because it's a different feeling you get. Like, something is something's controlling all of this and something's out there. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, girl. Girl, please. Girl, please. You ain't finna fool me. You are not finna fool me. You ain't finna fool me. Something, uh-uh. Because, like, it's a different feeling. Like, when I'm in church... It's a, like when I when I'm with friends, you be happy. Ooh, happy, happy, having fun, party, cool, hey. But when you're in church, it's like a different, it's a different happy. It's a different happy. Like when I be watching my church services, it's a different happy. Like it's like a and that's why when people say, Zoe, you gay, God gonna send you to hell. I it's a y'all, I feel feel him when i talk about him when i think about it when i want stuff when i manifest like it's a different oh see i'm gonna cry because i know what i'm talking about J ah! i don't like i'll be liking to cry i know what i'm talking about 
But so I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Or maybe he's just not through with me yet. <laughs> Cause you know, this is what I tell people too sometimes. I tell people this. I'd be like, um, because I've heard this and I don't know how true it is. Sometimes it can be true. Um the people and this is crazy. This is a different, this is a different type of thinking. So the people who do pass on, let's say they could have been four, or they could have been, let's say it was a street dude, right? And let's say he dies by getting shot, or let's say um, a car wreck. Me and somebody was talking one day, and we was like, when that person dies, let's say it was a car wreck, at that moment in their life, this is what my friend made me think about. They were ready. So to us, we may think like, oh, he was a thug. He should have. He was bad. He Oh, he going to hell. But how do we know what conversation he had with God the night before or even that morning? He could have been like, God, I, I know I'm not living right. And I, I know I'm bad, but, you know, my life is tough. But, you know, please forgive me. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. And let's say he went driving that day and it was a shootout and he passed. So me and my friend were saying that why didn't I die in my wreck? Because maybe at that moment I was not ready and God knew that. And he was like, I'm going to give you some time to get it right. And so, or it could be, I need you to touch some more lives. So that's why I, I try to, I just try to always think positive, you know? And so like my friend who, who passed and got hit by a car, um, <clears throat> he, um, <sighs> he wasn't the best of a person, right? He did things that weren't good. And, um, but I, and this is why when people, this is why when people talk about hood, people are like thugs. It makes me mad because it's, he was a good, he was a good person. Like, he didn't do no shooting or killing nothing like that. But as far as like, you know, stealing or being crazy, involving himself with dumb shit. Yeah. But um, his heart was so good. He had like, even though he, I mean, I can say he stole. So you're like, how's his heart good if he stole? It's hard to explain, but he was a good person. And when he did that with the cop chase or whatever i honestly feel he was ready and i think he knew i think he knew i think he knew so um i i i think i that's why i believe what my friend said like god would take you when you're ready like when it's time and and it's so funny because at that point in his life, he was like, Zo, he was like, Zo, he was like, Zo, um, I'm getting myself together. I I'm not doing this kind of stuff no more. And da, 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 da. And I was like, you're doing so good. And he was just like, cause I want, uh, he was like, I want my son to have this. And I was like, <sighs> I was like, oh, okay, 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 whatever, whatever. And he was just like doing so it's like at that point in his life he was doing so good and then it happened and i think god was like let me let me get you right now because i, I don't get you right now i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get you later oh thank you So that's how I found, uh, that's how I found my peace with the whole situation because I was just like, 
he's okay. He's okay. Oh my God, why am I crying? Yeah, I think he's okay. So that's why I tell people, don't look at death as a bad thing. Death is not like a bad thing, you know? It's like being here is shitty. Being on this wor- in this world is shitty. You got to see racism. You got to see people hating each other. You got to see people judging, people suffering, stress, depression, all of this stuff. So... I would rather my grandparents be gone. I would rather my friend who had to worry about going from hotel to hotel to this to that. Go be happy. Uh, And I got to be careful how I say that because some people are suicidal. And if you are, don't do it because... uh, Your life means a lot. Your life means a lot. And it's all about how you that it's all about how you think. It's all about how you think, all about how you look at life. That's why when people get so mad at me when I say depression isn't and if you get mad, I'm so sorry. I say depression isn't real because and I'm sorry if I make you mad. I'm not gonna stick on it too long. I just feel it's your mind, how you think, what you give attention and and energy too. And some people say, well, Zoe, it's, it's a chemical imbalance. Tell yourself, I want that gone. And it may be, I know sometimes it's harder than what it may think, what I'm speaking, but no, it is possible. No, it is possible. Um, because I've been, at, I've been low. I've been low. Hold on, y'all. I flex on my face. I've, I've been low. So don't think that you're the only one low. I think everybody in this world has been low. Um, somebody said depression. I, I said it is real. This is why I don't like to talk about it because then people are like, you don't understand. I know depression is real. But listen to what I'm saying. See, people only like to listen to what... People only like to listen to what they want to hear. Depression is real. Yes. But there are that manifestation. Yes. You... Have control over your life, friend. And and that is what the people have to... When people are depressed, they have to understand that. And it's, it's hard, but you have to understand. You have control over your life. You do. You do. If you're depressed about your money... I understand it. If, because you be like, I don't know where my money's going to come from. I don't know where my money's going to come from. You as God or whatever you believe in, get me up. Give me the strength to get up. And I want you to bless me with a job so I don't have to worry about not having no money. But you got to find the root in you to get yourself up so that depression for money is gone. If it's about love. You got to get, if it's about a love and a relationship, you, you have to find in your heart and say, you know what? I'm depending on somebody else to love me. I don't even love myself because I'm looking for it from somebody else. But what if that person gets with you, break up with you, cheat on you. Now you're more crushed because you were depending on that other person's love. You have to find that love for yourself. So don't be depressed because you want somebody. It's already in you. That. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Depression is a trap, friend. It's a trap. I feel like something's on me. It is a trap. It's nothing but... The, to me, depression is the devil. It's a dark spirit that you got to let. tell him, you're getting off of me. You're getting off me because I've been there. When I told y'all I was depressed about me as a person, when I was like... Oh, am I gay? Am I wrong? Am I this? Y'all, I was in a dark place and I had to, Zoe, let it go. Let it go. So I understand how y'all feel. I was crying myself to sleep. I was afraid to talk to my parents about it. I didn't know if anybody would understand me. All I knew is I was getting up, going to school, faking who I was, whatever, 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 come back home, pretending I had a girlfriend. Just, honey, I get it. 
I get it. Days where you even thought about, oh, I want to kill myself. I don't even want to be here because it's, I get it. But it's, it is all in you. Everything, everything that you want in life is in you. Whatever you want to get. That's, that's why people don't understand the power of manifestation, the power of the tongue. Um, 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 what's the other thing? Uh, 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 law of attraction, all of that. All that is so real. It's so real. And until, and, the, and another reason I tell people they be depressed is because you're telling yourself you are. Stop telling yourself you're depressed. This is why I feel like I, I be getting off of my sicknesses quick. Like, when I, when I be sick, I be like, I ain't sick no more. And be sick as hell. I be sick as hell. Body hurt. I be like, God, I'm not sick. I'm not sick no more. I'm not sick. I'm going to be good. And I'll, I'll be good by Tuesday. I'll be good by Friday. And even if Friday come, I'll be like, child, I feel better though. <laughs> like, you got to tell. It's like what you tell yourself. And, and, I don't know. I don't know. Y'all got to change your mindset, friend. You got to change your mindset. <laughs> Just like with people who be depressed, at, like not depressed about money, but people who be like, I want more money. I want more money. Sometimes those people who be like, I want more money. Why not me? Why am I not rich? Why am I not this? It's because you keep saying you're not, you're not even grateful for what you already got. So why are you going to be blessed with something else when you want more, more, more? That's why I tell my, I was talking to my friend yesterday about this. I was like, the reason you're not where you want to be is because you're not even happy with what you already got. You got more than somebody else already. And you're talking about, oh, I want more. What you got, this is what I learned in church. What you got right now is enough. And when God gives you the next bit of more, that's enough. And when you get more, that's enough. What you got at that moment is good for you. Okay, like that's why when it was like, is your cup half is your cup half full or empty or whatever they said, I always be like, my cup is just enough. Whatever's in my cup is what I'm supposed to have at this moment. I don't want my cup overflowing and I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with all that. What I got right now is just enough. And if he bless me with a million dollars tomorrow, I'm going to have just enough. That's why some people change because they weren't ready for whatever they got blessed with. And let me tell you something. I learned this from my granddaddy. The devil will bless you too, honey. He'll make you think what you're doing is right, how you living is right, what you got is right. And girl, he done gave you all that, making you think you good. So just because a celebrity is in a situation, are they rich, are they got this, don't think, oh, excuse me, don't think God gave it to him. God don't, he don't, the devil know how to trick you too. He know how to trick you too. Hello, somebody. Y'all better listen to me. <sighs> okay, y'all. <laughs> let, let me go. We just, y'all, I just, I'll start, I'll start talking, child. So you can tell I was raised in the Pentecostal church. The preacher don't know when to shut up. Okay, pastor, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ready. I'm ready to go, Pastor. Okay, okay. Amen. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, y'all. I'm going to let you go. All right, congregation. <laughs> now, how, they say that, how they say it in church? Is everybody happy? Amen. All right, stand up. <laughs> I'm going to let you go. Okay, y'all. Um, I love you. This was great. Hopefully, um, y'all start changing your mindset. Look, and for the people, just do this. Try this. For the people who do say that they're depressed, write on, your, like, get a piece of paper and tape it on your, wherever you brush your teeth and write, I'm not depressed. I'm not going to have, I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about this anymore. I'm not going to worry about that no more. And just say it every day you wake up. Like, I am going to have this. I am going to have that. And just say it and start training your mind to think that and see what happened, friend. Just train your mind. And you got to believe it. You got to believe it. If it's just, I'm not depressed anymore. Believe it when you say it. No doubt in it. Believe it. even if you are still sad. So what? I'm I'm not gonna be sad. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Just a little, you know, I'm a little down right now. It's a little bit, but I'm good. And just change your mindset. Change your mindset, friend. 
Just change your mindset. And I promise you, you can have whatever you want. And I know that sounds so cliche, but you can have whatever you want or desire. It's just all about how you think. And, how, and then after you, after, like my, I always go to my granddad. I I miss him. Um, prayer. What what did he always say? Prayer without work is dead. So if you praying for something, like B Simone said, that she was so true. If you praying for a man, a good man, you also got to be a good person, and then go put in the work to get that good man too. So now for you, you did. It. You can't just say, "Ooh, God, give me a good man." You sit back and do nothing, and you still lazy, whatever, whatever. Or you can't say, "God, I want to be an actress," and then you don't even get up and go to no schools or nothing like that. So you gotta, when you pray for something and you ask for something, you gotta get up and do it. So if you tell yourself, "Hey, I don't want to be depressed no more," you gotta get up and shake whatever it is that you're doing your same routine and go change it. For like, it's you gotta pray, work. Work, do it and get it. Period. That's why people need to go to church. Oh! Oh my God! How cold is it outside? Oh, I thought this little sweater was gonna do it. Oh! Twenty-eight degrees in Georgia. Oh, you got me screwed. Oh, you got me screwed. <laughs> 28. Bitch. I know you lying. I hope the little the um I hope the beauty supply store ain't closed. That's where I'm going. Oh my god. Oh Jesus, 28. Oh. <laughs> Why would it be so cold? You gotta look around like you're trying to see where it's coming from. Oh my god, it's so cold outside. <laughs> like we don't know where bitches coming from outside. Why are you looking around? It's in the air. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. I love you. Um, be a better you. And I talk um uh, talk to you when I talk to you. Oh, I, I, I gotta start. Oh my God. I'm gonna start. Y'all start saying this too. My granddad taught me this too. It, it really does work. You gotta be like, you gotta, this is, this was always his prayer at church. He would always say, God help me so I can help myself so I can help somebody else. God help me so I can help myself so that I can help somebody else. Amen. Okay. All right, y'all. I love you. Got to go for real, for real, because I think I'm going to close. Oh, God. Put my mask on. Put my mask, put my mask on. Okay, bye.